Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Cup. Today we're making something, well, a staple basically on each, on every Christmas table in, in Sweden, every Julebord. And it's gravad lax. It's, it's salmon that you brine raw, basically. Um, I think you would call it brine. Ah, call it what you want to, you'll see how we do it. It's, it's not liquid, so probably it's not a brine. It's just with salt and, and sugar. Um, it's very easy to do. It takes about two days in the fridge. Um, and it tastes amazing, especially with this kind of dilly head waiter sauce, hovmästar sauce. Um, it's a mustard dill kind of mix, um, which is just great together with the fish. We have two different ones. We have one that uh, had beetroot and horseradish on it. And the other one is the real classical Swedish one, and that's just sugar, salt and dill. Um, and we'll, we'll do these two today. But before we start, as always, don't forget, click the subscribe button um, and the bell icon if you want to stay updated on new content. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it and it's something you can have as a starter, although you're not making a kind of classical Swedish Yule board, which is just a Christmas buffet. Uh, but this is really a staple. It's almost on, on every Christmas buffet in Sweden. So now, let's get cooking. Here we have all the ingredients for the beetroot and horseradish gravlax um, and it's just grated raw beetroot, two beetroots, horseradish, difficult to say how much this is because it depends how thick and long your beetroot is, no pun intended, um, a bit of dill, roughly chopped, some sugar, some salt and some sugar, you have to be careful with those. But for this recipe it doesn't matter because it's equal quantities. So what we'll do is we'll put about three tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of salt, put a little bit of this on and then we can start rubbing it a bit, making sure you work all over your salmon. Massage it into the meat. Radish as well. So now we get the rest on. There we go. Now the horse radish. You kind of want to make sure your whole fish is covered. Mix it up a bit, maybe. Like that, a bit more horseradish, take the rest of the horseradish, and some more beetroot. And now you kind of pack your fish with this, make a tight little package. You could do this in cling film as well, uh, without having the plate on. So, there we go. And that's what you have to do. Now uh, the rest it needs is time. So this goes into the fridge for two days. And one day in, you have to turn it which you can do. I, I will move this over to a cling film package. So after a day, turn it, and then after the second day, it's ready. Here we have the real classical version of uh, Grovad Lux. And it's just sugar, salt, and dill. And what I've done is I've cut it in the middle, and what we'll do is we put one kind of on, on top of each other like that, and make a package out of it. But let's put it like this to start with. And again, it's three sugar, that was salt, and three sugar, 
So three salt, three sugar, always equal company uh, in quantities. I'll start to rub that in a bit. And now we get the dough going as well. And you can see it was too annoying to transfer the salmon to the cling film with the other version. So now I'm putting it straight on the cling film. So now what we want to do is fold this over like that. Try to get all the small pieces and then we'll just pack this into a nice little package quite tight. Make sure to close the ends. And there we go. A nice little package. And this goes into the fridge as well for two days. And after one day we'll turn it. The first thing we have to do for this classical Swedish sauce that goes perfect with the gravad lax or the, the, the brined salmon is hovmästa sauce. We have to pick the dill for it. Uh, hovmästare is well, it's basically head waiter, so it's the head waiter sauce. So we'll pick all the dill first and then we'll chop it up. So this is enough. We need about yeah, two tablespoons maybe. Doesn't have to be too fine, but it's important to kind of pick the dill so that the stalks are not in it because the stalks are a bit too thick. So that's about enough. Put that in a plate, and then it's very simple. It's it's a mustard-based sauce, and here we have some Bavarian mustard. Normally, I would have a sweet Swedish mustard. I need a smaller spoon for that. Since I can't get that mustard here in Switzerland, we'll have to do with Bavarian ones. About the same amount of mustard to what you have as dill. And then we need some white wine vinegar. A little bit less than the amount of mustard. So that should be enough. And then we need a bit of lemon juice. What I also like is a bit of clementine or mandarin zest. This kind of makes it a bit Christmassy, perfect Christmas flavor. And then we just have to get it out, scrape it off. So, and since it's sweet mustard, you don't have to put a lot of sugar, but a little bit of sugar we put in as well. Like that, it's about, I would say, a teaspoon. And a neutral oil. In this case, as usual, it's grapeseed oil. And you kind of want to mix it to an emulsion. Try that. Mm -hmm. Could use a little bit more lemon. Just a touch more sugar. And a pinch of salt. Let's see if we get the right. Mm, no, that's perfect. We'll put that to the side and then we'll get our salmons that have been in the fridge for two days. So we'll do the beetroot and horseradish one first. It's going to be a bit messy, so bear with me. Take the plastic away. You can already scrape some of it off onto the plastic.
get rid of that for now. As you can see, it's a bit messy, but what's underneath will be nice. Try to scrape it off to get a more or less clean fish. You have to say it's pretty amazing, vibrant color. And you'll see the taste will be fantastic. So let's get rid of this plate and then we'll cut into it. Now when you cut it, I have quite a long salmon knife. You just go back and forth down towards the skin. I'm not going to cut the whole thing because I'm just going to have a small taste of plate today. Do a couple more. And don't forget we have one more salmon with a different brine. So. As you can see, it's a nice kind of red edge around it that I got from the beetroot. Here we have the other package with the classical kind of brine for Gravlax. Again, try to get it open. Perfect, and then again, just scrape off. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit dill left, it's, it's a nice taste, so we'll get the rough stuff off. There we are, and then we'll do this as well. I will put one to the side, because we only need to cut one today. And again, in the end, the cutting is the same. We'll start. Do you want to keep it nice and thin? So I'll cut a couple more and then it's time to plate. It's time to taste these babies. Um, normally, this would be, as I said, on, on kind of a, a Christmas buffet, so with a lot of other things. Uh, but I'm just eating it quite pure with the sauce. You could serve some boiled potatoes. What's really nice is to boil the potatoes in water and dill, and obviously salt. It gives them a nice taste and it fits perfectly with this. If you don't like this kind of mustardy dill sauce, which is amazing by the way, you can make it kind of with a creme fraiche sauce, some creme fraiche or some yogurt, a bit of lemon, some salt, and then some pepper in there. It will be great as well. So each to its own. And now let's dig in. We'll start with a bit of the beetroot one. Get a bit of sauce on it. Mm. I've, I've only seen this before. I've never actually eaten it, but it's nice. It's, um, it's different. It has a bit of the beetroot taste, a bit of the horseradish. Now let's go for the classical one. This I've done many times before, so I kind of know what it will taste like. But... This, for me, it's, it's the taste of Christmas. Obviously in Sweden you kind of eat this, the same buffet on, on midsummer as well. But uh, yes, yeah, so it's Christmas and midsummer. That's perfect. And the dill has this kind of very slight licorice anisey taste to it. Love it. And as you've seen, it's, again, dead easy. You have to plan a bit ahead because it needs at least two days in the fridge. You can keep it longer as well. I would say, this being the first time I do the beetroot one, it could actually have used a little bit longer in the fridge is not as tender as the standard one. And I put them in on the same time, took them out after two days, which is now. But I would say that the beetroot could probably have used another day. So count three days if you want to do the beetroot version and two days if you want to do the standard version. But you can leave them longer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you stayed with me for this long, don't forget, thumbs up. 
like the video, please. Um, and if you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button. Um, next time, I'm not sure yet what we'll make. I'm sure it will be good. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.